So, hello everybody. Thank you for tuning in. It's beautiful to have you here. I'm super excited to have with me a very special guest um, with a very special announcement that we have here with me. We're going to talk about empowerment of femininity and conscious sexuality. Um, just before I'm going to let to anyone that doesn't know who, who, I'm, who I am, um, I'm working with people, helping them add ecstasy to the bedroom so they can have more empowered, more conscious and more fun uh, sex life. And as a result, have more meaningful connections and more meaningful intimacy and just enjoy life much more. Um, I was mainly working with men so far. Um, and just before I let Elsa introduce herself and her incredible work that she's doing in this world, um, I want to announce that we are launching something incredible together. And we are launching a program for women, helping women to connect better with their own body, reclaim their sexuality, open up, express themselves, express their desires openly, remove confusion in communication with men, and just enjoy a much more open, conscious, beautiful uh, sex life and relationships. Um, so this is something we are going to do together. Um, without further ado, I'll let Elsa introduce herself and let's dive into it. Hello, everyone. I'm really, really happy to be here. And thank you, Yuval, for giving me this opportunity to launch this course with you. Um, my work is about uh, feminine empowerment. Like I, I help women reclaim their femininity through owning their body, their sensuality, and their deep wisdom through different um, courses, workshops, and also coaching sessions. Beautiful. What is your? I know that you have an incredible story, and I want the. I want to. Sh I want you to share it with people so they will better understand why are you even doing what you're doing. So. How did it all came about? Why did you even start doing this? Um, I believe like it's it's <laughs> I'm gonna go way back. It started when I, I was in depression, and uh, I just want I figured out that to find meaning in my life, I would need to know myself better. So I studied psychotherapy, and throughout the years, uh, I figured that I wanted to dive really like much deeper into femininity and what it means to be a woman in this society and um so I, I oriented all my work in my studies on this and um later after school i continued to dive deeper even into sexuality i had problems in my own sexuality that really pushed me to to look under the surface of what was going on okay there is the brain but there is also like a, a body memories and like many many things or like entering in this um um, uh, like can create problems so through my uh, blockages I like it pushed me to dive deeper and deeper into uh, what was going on so I've been doing this for a few years now and um, it's still a work in process it's still a work that is um, so interesting and um that I'm getting to, I'm getting to know myself even deeper and deeper. And now I really share this with other women and help them also reclaim, um, yeah, their intuition, get more in touch with their boundaries, with um, like to to develop their communication skills about their desires, their needs, um, to know themselves better. What what do they like? Even uh, what makes them have pleasure? So. Yeah, I guess um, that's uh, in in short <laughs> my story. Cool. It's like working in the space as well. I feel that the conversation always ending up being about communication, and there is so much shame and so much guilt and so much taboo when it comes to sexuality and us expressing ourselves in this world, and especially for women, there is so much pressure from our society from the way that the social zeitgeist and the discussion is happening and what is really going on. And it's just breaking my heart to see that people constantly coming at me with questions, both men and women is like, I have this problem. I have this problem. Um, I can get it hard. I don't know how to communicate. Myself. And at the end of the day, I realize that everything is just about communicating better, communicating what we desire, communicating what our part communicating properly so we realize what our partner desire and coming up to a more connected intimacy to a more connected sexuality how do you find like 
actually, I was really blown away by some of the insights you were sharing with me specifically about the uh, women menstrual cycle. And it gave me like profound insights into like, I was like, wow, I can go back and much better understand how I could show up better for women in my life. And also I wish most of my partners knew about this kind of thing. So they will, you know, beat themselves up a little bit less and be more connected to what is actually happening in their bodies so they can be more conscious and more aware about it. Um, so how do you see it in your work happening? I mean, if you want, we can go into the cycles themselves, but I feel it will be really interesting on my end to see like the kind of like, where do you see the disconnect when it comes to women and their sexuality mostly happening? Well, uh, I see that women project a lot on the pleasure of the other, like pleasing the other. And that was my case too. Like I, I really thought that I was so into sexuality and, uh, but I was so not connected to myself. And it's really like all about the other, all about how do we look? What do we see in porn? And how do we, like, how do we project the other want us to be? So like, I feel the most important is really to start looking from the inside because it's like you're shifting the perspective from looking at yourself from the outside. How do I look? What does the other expect from me? To shifting from the inside. How actually do I feel? What do I need? And like, how, how can I express this? But first, like really to know your own desires to, to, to understand what's going on in your body. Like you were talking about the cycle, understanding yourself, understanding the like, what's happening throughout the month in the hormone wise and what, what is your body doing actually really helps to, to take a distance also from it and not to get um, uh, carried away, like overwhelmed by the emotional waves, for example, or, or just to, to look at it as it is and, uh, and to be able like this to present it also to others. Okay, this is what's going on with me. So I would need your help on this and this and that. And um, I feel in a relationship, but even outside of a relationship, to be able to communicate it to your, um, to the people around you, um, it's it's very important. Um, yeah, even <laughs> to have a, a good relationship with your parents, just to like living at home or with your roommates, you know, just to tell them like this is the week that I'm feeling shitty about myself, and. I can just observe it from the outside, not really buy into it, like understand that it's a story going on in my head and in one week it's going to be over. But um, but really to be able to, yeah, communicate it to the outside so they can also support you. And um, yeah, what I wanted to say with this is really understanding yourself on all different levels. Uh, what are your needs? What are your desires? How do you have pleasure? knowing your own body, how do you work, what's happening, really gives you the power to communicate about it and to give the others the opportunity to help you surf in these different um, things. Absolutely. I think that just like generally in our culture, there's just not enough discussion. When I, a lot of people are reaching out to me and being like, wow, it's incredible. I can't believe that you're just talking with so much openness about these kind of things. And honestly, like true to God, I'm doing this. And the last thing I was like, I was thinking about a lot of things doing what I'm doing. The last thing I was thinking about is like, oh, it's actually strange or um, out of the ordinary to be talking about sex. For me, it's like, why not? You know, sex is like a natural thing. It, it, it reoccurs. It's probably the most pleasurable thing we can do with our body. Why don't we talk about it for fuck's sake? You know, like, yeah, excuse my friend. Um, yeah, it's, it's really crazy. So it's I think, changing. yeah, so with women especially, um, what you said is so remarkably true. And I experienced it both for, as a lover throughout the years, observing my partners and how easy it was for them to fall into the seat of the pleaser. Even though I was always like encouraging them to like, tell me what you like, tell me what you want, being so, super open. It was a very, very unique and rare to find someone that is feeling absolutely owning her pleasure, owning her body, doesn't care about anything like that. And if we are, I think in general, in the culture, there's not enough discussion about sex. If we are narrowing down the discussion on women, especially, 
I feel that one thing that's standing out for me from discussions with past lovers, from women in my life, from teachers, from, from, people, from women I work with, it's always coming down to shame and guilt from the cultural, from the family, from the childhood around sexuality. Of like, oh, if you're open about your sexuality, it means you're a little dirty. It's like a, a little bit of slut shaming. Um, even men look down on women that have too much sex or too open about their sexuality. And they, and they observe that in media with the, from their parents as they were growing up, from everywhere around. And it's kind of like forming this paradigm of like, oh, I should, I should be reserved. A good girl is a girl that should be reserved to herself, to not express herself openly. And uh, obviously, both of us believe that this is complete bullshit. But I would love to hear your perspective about how this either play in your life and also from what you saw, insights from what you saw working with other women, how this is like playing in their life. So, yeah, sex is still very much taboo, even if it's starting to open up, but sex and pleasure and especially uh, feminine pleasure is something that is really... Like right now, talking live, I'm thinking, why did my father or my brothers watch this or my cousins? And it's it's really like, um, this is something that we all do, like most of the people. And this is all how we arrived here also. But it's it's like so taken out of its natural um, meaning and... Um, I feel for women, it comes from millennia of, of repression and um, like of putting down everything that is feminine, like the feminine body, the feminine pleasure, like seeing women as uh, objects. And this is why I think like reclaiming, like se sexuality of the women has belonged to men, has belonged to children, has belonged to the state. Like women didn't belong to themselves until not so long ago when they actually could open a bank account by themselves get the right to vote so it's still really much imprinted in us that it's all about the other like we don't matter um what was your question again i feel i got a bit carried away oh, yeah, i think you're going in the exact right direction and <laughs> it was about how like guilt and shame and slut shaming is pushing women to be yeah you know, girls and never express themselves never own their pleasure or ask for something specific and i was asking like how do you how did you saw it playing in your own life and as a result in women that you work with i see it most of the time it's like or all the way to one or all the way to the other and it's it's really hard because it's the archetype of the slut and the archetype of the virgin and it's really hard to make them communicate and to really allow them to you know have space have both their space um i see a lot of women like judging themselves so hard for having uh, a sexually liberated life and enjoying it but you know just by themselves sh like shaming um and it's crazy because even though there is nobody around like of course sometimes women are also shaming each other like we're the worst uh, you know, like seeing a girl in the street with the thong coming out of the pants or something like it's it's a uh, but um but yeah, even when there is nobody around shaming them, it's so imprinted. So this is something like it's beliefs, it's uh it's um patterns that we need to to find. We need to like find the source. What's what happened there? Like was there an event? Is it something that is also like can be transgenerational? Um and really try to like take it out slowly slowly like take the layers it's like to peel an onion you have so many layers in these things like we cannot really pinpoint one thing because it's also different for each woman but um but yeah it's definitely something that um that needs to be taken care of for everyone men and women fuck yeah absolutely i see a future in which everybody are open and honest just communicating clearly with each other non-violently communicating with each other exactly what they desire what they want what they need sex is not a taboo it's a beautiful thing that everybody share with each other and doesn't have to be everybody share with each other this is my own polyamorous kind of like a dream uh, dream reality but it doesn't world. even even just like within like monogamous couples that chose to be together and share each other with each other forever and ever still there is so much like i work with couples 
constantly. There is so much disconnect and it's mind boggling. I see couples that are together for five, 10, 12, 20 years and never had a proper open discussion about what they actually want and like in the bedroom. And it's kind of like in, in our culture, since we came from, from you know, uh, hunters gatherers, we started having ownership, we started having property. And the idea of a relationship as something that we do together um, as a household is just a, a quite new thing, probably a few minutes in the timeline of human existence. And it became something that is more about the partnership, making the house together, bringing kids, making family, doing like life partnership, than about enjoying and having fun. So it's kind of like this element I feel in our culture kind of like died out a little bit for so many people. And yeah, it makes sense why this all happened when you take into consideration everything in the evolution of, of the history of what, what's going on in our culture. But at the same time, it's really painful. Like I want people to have fun. I want people to enjoy sex. It's hard for me to, to meet women that are in the... 30s, 40s, even 50s that either never experienced orgasm or experienced somewhat of an orgasm, but never like something so intense that it's empowering their entire week or even months. Um, let's not talk about squirting and all other interesting explorations that they can go for. And, and it's just sad to me because I know it's not just about sex. If you're open, it's all starting from our bodies. We are in a culture that is too much here. And we are, when we are disconnected from our bodies, everything suffers. And people that are more open and more connected to their body, to their pleasure, everything else becomes more fun. You attract more abundance to your life. You feel better in your body, your well-being, your health, your physical health is better. Yeah. Orgasm is like one of the best things you can do for yourself health-wise. Let's not talk about the fun and the pleasure, yeah? And so, yeah, I just... Yeah, it's uh, a cocktail of hormones that is just empowering all the rest, like uh, the mood, the, the immune system, everything. It's really... I mm. want to know more about that a little bit. Like, how, how do you feel open, expressive enjoyment from sexuality is empowering other areas of life and health and well-being? Well, first of all, I think that like there is a way to shine, like to, to show yourself when you are really empowered sexually that is like kind of um, something that is really centered and you know who you are, you know where you stand. There is something like very um, stable, I would say. And uh, this in itself is like, once you find stability inside of yourself, all the rest kind of, you know, balances around. Um, there is also this huge creativity that comes with, uh, with like having high sexual energy that you know how to direct in, uh, in this. Um, and yeah, just like, sorry, hormones wise, and just like good, good mood wise, like it's it strengthens the 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 relationship a lot also and uh and also like it's like for me it allows me to go back to my inner child like it's a it's an area to play it's really an area to be silly to not care about anything like where everything is allowed within the boundaries of consent of course and uh it's just just a huge like white canvas where we're together and let's just have fun and we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know where it's going to take us, but, um, yeah. but it's just really a lot of fun. Yeah. When I, yeah, the, the playfulness element of it is, I, I see it through working with people. It's something that comes up again and again and again. It's quite surprising to me. It's like maybe because personally I'm very prone to just do things more playfully and just have fun and don't think about too much about how things should be and I don't like predictability I don't have to-do lists or schedule but when I talk about people both couples especially couples but also singles there is like from men and women there is this like predictable way 
of how sex is, you know? Like, we go, and just, not just sex, relationships in general. We go on a date, we start um, touching each other, we start kissing, we go home. Obviously, we optimize for penetration, so um, condoms on, boom, boom, down, and that's, that's how sex is. And then, like, this is incredibly sad to me because, and especially in couples, it's even, it's even, it's, it's a little bit different, but it's the same narrative because they are together and maybe they're busy and meeting throughout the night. Some of them even schedule times to have sex. And then it's kind of like this, it's like a task, you know, it becomes like a chore, like a thing that we need to do together because we are a partner and, and sex is like, it's something that we need to do, you know? And so like, they, they go into the bedroom and there's this like predictable, way of you know how they know that they get each other to orgasm as quickly as possible and done and be done with it and when in reality sex is about play like you said it's about like it's a moment it's a space it's a time in life throughout our busy crazy mind-oriented life in which we can drop everything trust each other fully and take each other on crazy adventures and that's what is sex for me. You know, I discovered so much about my, my body, my mind, my being through sexuality, communication. Like I, I get to practice everything about myself through sexuality. And yeah, this is, the, this is the message that we want to bring to the world. And this is why we're here today. And this is why we are partnering up. Um, we were living together in Copangan for throughout the whole quarantine, for six months. Um, I had the pleasure <clears throat> to watch your growth as you were, you mine and watching each other's work and exchanging ideas and information with each other. And um, yeah, we decided that uh, it makes sense to partner up. And um, so, so far my, my work was mostly focused on men. Um, and now we are launching together something that is gonna be epic. And it's for women. It's a sensual alchemy experience for women. It's going to be compiled out of three different components. So one is a video course. It's eight weeks long, eight modules. It's going to be a module released every week. And we're going to cover all kinds of amazing concepts from conceptual, better understanding what is sexuality, what is sexuality for me, how to better connect with my body, how to better communicate myself with my partner, partners. What is femininity, masculinity, integration of them within us? Like really empower ourselves sexually and intimately in the world, the way we conduct ourselves. In, so it wouldn't be in a way that it's empowering and constructive and beautiful. And then also there will be in the videos um, a demonstration compo um, component, which will be me showing on models how to do different things. So teaching blowjob and head and uh, and tantric massage and all kinds of incredible things like um, self-love breast massage, which is brought by Elsa, um, invented and brought by Elsa and- um, Not invented. <laughs> specific sequence, I'm giving you, I'm giving you a- And yeah, a bunch of other incredible things. Other than that, it will be a weekly group call that I'm gonna do with the group um, of incredible women that are already in the program, that have already joined and cannot wait to start this and go in. It's beautiful women from all around the world, all in their process of the journey, wanting to expand, wanting to celebrate their beauty, celebrate sexuality and connect with their bodies and with the world and with their partners, with ecstasy. And Elsa will join me for some of the video calls. And then, and the most exciting, in my opinion, um, there will be a one-on-one -on -one component in which Elsa personally will walk you through what is going on in your life? Where do you feel there is, might be a disconnect with your body, with your partner? And how can you empower yourself, empower your, your femininity, empower your body so you can project it outside of the world, increase your well-being, increase your happiness, and better understand your cycles and what's going on in your body through very specific um, practices and, and methods. And so, yeah, that's going to be launched tomorrow. Uh, there is still there is still is a week for joining. Um, so if anyone is interested, if you have a questions, by the way, leave your questions in the comments. We will get to answer them after the live is ending. And if you are curious to joining or hear more about that, feel free to send either of us a DM, and we will be happy to jump on call and explain to you further and see if there is an alignment. Um, 
Yeah, super fucking exciting. How do you say, Elsa? Yeah, can't wait. Amazing. <laughs> Any last uh, few yeah. words you want to say to the ladies that uh, might consider uh, working with us? Well, if you feel that it's resonating, you should go. It's your body, like it's your intuition waking up and saying like, yes, I want more of this. And this is a really good sign that you should follow. So I can't wait to meet you all. And um, yeah, both of us, we're waiting for you. Beautiful. Okay. I cannot wait to hear from you guys. Thank you very much, Elsa, for being here today. Thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all very soon.